National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance presents a Bravo video event, the Business Insurance Zone, dedicated to financial professionals who use insurance in their practice. And on today's show, tax-free income with life insurance with industry expert Ken Davis, CPA. And now the host of the Business Insurance Zone, the whiz of the biz, insurance columnist Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone, and it is a Friday, I have to say. And welcome back, Ken Davis, CLU, CHFC, CFP, CPA. Yes, sir. And I like that. And of course, we're broadcasting to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain, although I must say, it's a pretty dark day today. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> dark out there. Weather's not that great today. Hey, 332 days out of the year for sun, I better not complain. But it's funny, we just celebrate when the rain comes. We're like, wow, great weather here. I you know. sleep great. Yeah, it's wonderful to hear the it pitter-patter is. on the roof. It is, and of course our people in the Northwest are going, you guys are crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah but <laughs> when you don't see it, you appreciate it. Hey, can you imagine, I had an agent in Oregon, he goes, it's rains 10 straight days here. Steve, my, my grass is five inches tall. Oh, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine running out there at the end of your <laughs> work day? You need a scythe, not wow. a lawnmower out there. Wow, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You're, har <laughs> you're harvesting this stuff. Well, you know what? <laughs> we're talking, all this week we've been talking about combination annuities, the new modern theory of modern day, especially if you didn't catch Wednesday's show, you got to see that, uh, with Eric and, uh, and Ken. And they were, and Eric was taking my place there the Monday through Wednesday show. He did so a I great job. He did a great job. His first time, and hey, I think he did a great job. Hey, I'm really interested today in adding another layer onto our thought because. In our original four shows, we're talking about four different types of annuities by laddering the durations. Now we're going to add maybe a fifth option that actually has even greater tax advantages. And I want to set the stage and then let Ken pontificate, as only Ken can, on the issue of non-modified life insurance contracts that are kept in force for the life of the insured and that you take strategic withdrawals to basis and or policy loans to gain at the right time in the appropriate amounts. Did you hear all this disclaimer? Oh my goodness, I gotta say it all just to cover it. And then if that's true, you might actually be able to pull out some tax-free income here on withdrawals to basis and policy loans to gain. Again, remember, you say, Steve, I can't keep all that straight. Well, we have papers on this. If you want to order it, we'll happen to give it to you. As well as when we do our illustrations in here, we know what we're doing. We'll do it for you to make sure that it's compliant. And one of the biggest things that I like about non-modified endowment contracts is for us to be able to squeeze the best rate of return, we suppress the death benefit down to the DEFRA and TAMRA corridors at every opportunity that the code allows us to do. And if we have to switch options to maintain that low cost of insurance, you can bet our bottom dollar we're illustrating that. And I just wanna give you confidence that whatever we're doing, our goal is to bring the costs down so low that we're competing with other and retirement ideas so that we can really say it's not only is it tax advantaged, but we've done every and every step of the way, we've obeyed the regulatory code to suppress the costs as best we can. Well, let me jump in too. We, you, we were laughing about the fact that you pointed out to our viewers that I thought you were a snake oil salesman when I first met you. And, where you brought me around when I had my, my second opportunity to talk to you was in fact talking about squeezing those costs down. I'm, I was in, I was enthralled. It was really interesting to see how we do that. And, and what's beautiful here is that you have taught that to the rest of the uh, mm -hmm. the people here at Brokers Alliance so that any of them that do these illustrations know how to mm -hmm. create that reduction in cost. Yeah, and one step further than that, we have now touched base with the top contracts in the United States. Again, I'm so sorry to say this, not all everybody's a player, okay? Right. But the carriers that are players in income, and remember, it could be, shockingly, if your interest, if you're kind of a conservative and you're looking at interest rate kind of ideas, it could be a whole life participating contract, especially if you're showing your numbers at 6%. It also could be current company practice, which is another interest rate. It could be indexing. Could be foreign or domestic. Right. And for some of you aficionados, people are still playing in the equity market, could be variable. So I'm just saying those are all your possibilities, okay? Today, when we talk about this, Ken, we're talking about the tax issues because this, everything up to leading up today, that's really good. We're managing the AGI, the adjusted gross income. We're doing the modified adjusted gross income. 
and you put that little C on it, I have to think about something to say about that, right? Magic, the magic of the government, right? We're, we're trying to mitigate taxes, but in my scenario using, um, and we'll just like, for, for an example, I'll just use indexing right now since it's so popular. When we're looking at indexing, and I'm able to pull out money tax-free, that gives me a lot more flexibility. Maybe I should defer my qualified plan till 79 and a half. Maybe I should delay it. Because if I could take my income out, maybe be perhaps between 60 and 70, I'd be taking all my money out of my non-MEC contract free, as long as it's kept in force for the life of the insured and all the things I caveat are true. And I don't have my social security. I get it all. I don't have to worry about taxation. Yeah, let's focus on one of the tax issues that we didn't spend much time in the prior segments. And by the way, more than any of the other five segment shows we've done in the past, all of this information builds on it throughout the week. So I'm really going to recommend that if you like these concepts that you, you watch each of them at least in once. In sequence. And I know it's a lot, of, a lot of time, but I think there's a lot of value there. But one of the things I want to talk about is we did touch on the fact that uh, each time I have the five-year immediate annuity, five-year deferred, five-year deferred, and then the index with the lifetime income benefit for the more modernized split annuity concept. Well, each time we turn on the new one, there's more and more of the distribution is taxable mm -hmm. because I've accumulated deferred income on those deferred uh, accounts. And when I turn them on, that's going to increase the portion that's taxable. Well, the idea is that instead of having a lifetime income benefit rider indexed annuity, on that strategy, we now layer an index life product on it. And you're gonna to say to me, you're nuts, a 65 year old buying a indexed life insurance policy? Are you, are you out of your mind? That just mm -hmm. isn't gonna work because we all know that we need 10, 15 years or more for a, a policy to make sense. Well, think about it. Five year immediate annuity, two five year deferreds, we're 15 years out. Mm -hmm. So the 65 year old person is now 80, well gosh, by that time, we might have used the life insurance for its best use, which is tax-free distributions, income tax-wise. And if it's in a trust, it could be estate tax-free. But in this case, we're not using trust. We want income, not mm -hmm. um, estate planning. And uh, now the life insurance works great because now the distribution doesn't have to deal with those annuitization factors. Now mm -hmm. we're taking out, we're withdrawing our basis or we're loaning from the policy tax-free mm -hmm. And so we've had plenty of time for that to cook. Now understand, and this is that transparency, full disclosure, unlike the lifetime income benefit rider, these are not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So for the first 15 years, you could structure a guaranteed program to age 80. This may or may not work. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm comfortable with the idea of letting 15 years of an index strategy mm -hmm. work. I think that's enough time based on historical results. Right. That's my best guess for the future. And I'm okay with that as long as the client fully understands that and the advisors think that that's appropriate for the client. Uh, but the cool thing about that is now I get my distributions tax-free and it gets rid of another problem. Those deferred annuities ultimately come due. When they pass away and they pass it to the kids, full taxation mm -hmm. on all those gains. And remember, we have a larger and larger portion of that deferred mm -hmm. gain. So now we convert what was a deferral into permanent deferral or tax-free on our life, mm -hmm. life insurance benefit. So I, that's why, while it, re, it, it increases the risk in the process, mm -hmm. it reduces the tax issue in the tail end. Now, I want to bring up another thing too, because I think it's a tactical issue. I'm not saying this is the way to go, but it's definitely one you'll want to look at as a producer. I was working on a contract where I was doing exactly what Ken was saying, laddering different durations of annuities. But then I said that I was using money the client already had accumulated or coming from another vehicle, but it was already there. But uh, many clients that I meet have not only this single deposit asset coming from bank or another annuity mm -hmm. or whatever, but they also have cash flow in their monthly um, budget. Sure. So I, I kind of pivoted a little bit and I said, I'm still gonna do Ken's SPIA, the first, the second five-year deferred annuity, mm -hmm. the third five-year annuity, but in the 15th year, I'm doing dollar cost averaging into my indexed life because I have the cash flow to do that, right? right? And I'm willing to commit to that because it's so long, I was looking at the difference between the monthly and the annual 
right? Mm -hmm. It left a lot more money in my today to pivot mm -hmm. while I was putting my cash flow into dollar cost average. Remember now, this is, doesn't always work in every scenario, sure. but it is a scenario that I saw at work and I, you've been using this now, using your laddering approach on the annuities and using what my cash flow is on my dollar cost averaging to pick up on my long-term tax-free using indexing or if you use a whole life par or if you're using current company, current assumption you will. Right. So um, one of the things that as you're talking about that reminded me, I actually had a client years ago and this guy was a, a vice chairman of a, of a bank, a major bank. And so he was pretty savvy with the numbers. And uh, where we take money to live on from a tax perspective makes a difference. He was actually taking some money out of his IRA each year mm -hmm. to live on along with other things. I said, no, leave that inside the IRA and draw it from capital gain assets where you have basis against mm -hmm. it and then lower tax rates and all that other stuff. He calls me up after the tax preparer, his CPA has, has helped him do his return. He said, Ken, that idea saved me $5,000 in taxes last year because mm -hmm. I left the IRA alone. So your concept of layering life insurance and, and utilizing it somewhere along the way and letting your IRAs and qualified plans defer until their maximum distribution mm -hmm. age of seven and a half is a very, very valid concept. Plus, uh, one of the, the insurance illustration uh, marketing companies, mm -hmm. uh, software that we use, they actually have part of their program. One of the best things they mm -hmm. do is tell you where to take it first. Uh, better tax impact, let the things that make more money that are tax deferred uh, work. So these layering strategies and utilizing different ideas can actually be very uh, beneficial in this whole thing. Well, when I think about combining and utilizing combination annuities, structuring it because of tax issues, I want to be able to generate the most net spendable income. Talk a little bit about that word net, because that's where the golden is. Well, I think so, and I, 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 I think that's why we started off this in the first segment is using an example where we think the client's in a 25% tax bracket. Well, mm -hmm. technically they are. But there's the effective tax bracket, which is essentially that sneaky backdoor mm -hmm. magic, invisible and you know, taxation mm -hmm. that the government's using that they don't come out and tell the people. Talk about full disclosure. Mm -hmm. Gosh, they're they're working on hiding things like nobody's business. And <laughs> and this demonstrated that we had an effective forty two percent tax bracket. Mm -hmm. So uh, by coming back with layered annuities, split annuities, we can affect adjusted gross income. Mm -hmm. And then tactically doing things like life insurance on the tail end of this thing, we can actually show people how to overcome some of those taxation mm -hmm. at death issues and, uh, and, and you know, more and more being taxable on the distribution. Well, just that you said you freed up five grand by making a small alteration of what you're taking out first, to me is a huge way of actually gaming the system looking at it, how we're doing it, how we're taking money out, when we take it out, what's tax treatment does it have? Right. All that really matters. And I love this new program we're talking about. I'm not going to tell you what it is, though. That's our secret sauce. Well, we're actually going to customize it, so it'll be our version. Okay. I like that. Well, you're listening to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that focuses on insurance in your practice. You can write me at thebiz at brokersalliance.com or just call us 1-800-290-7226, extension 147. Right after the break, Ken and I will be back with more on tax-free using life insurance right after the break. Whether you're a professional planner pursuing a strategic partner or an insurance distributor seeking a national alliance, your business just went into overdrive. Now enter the largest resource of insurance products and services with unparalleled access to a worldwide audience of consumers through the National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance, who can take your company and launch it into the stratosphere of success. With Countermeasures, the most comprehensive carrier intel in the industry, the MASH unit with field triage underwriting and the premium tolerance test, the life insurance financial evaluation, the most rigorous policy review, and Bravo High Definition Broadcasting with online social media. Your search just ended. 
Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant, your host, insurance columnist, financial color commentator, and on this show, interviewer extraordinaire. Remember, before moving forward with any of the strategies that we talk about, especially this week, don't forget to contact your CPA, your tax attorney, or if you're FINRA licensed, always check in with your broker-dealer compliance department. You can call me toll-free, 1-800-290-7226, extension 147, for any quotes or questions that you may have on life insurance, annuities, DI, LTC, and group pension plans. Hey, it's not what I know, it's who I know, and that's why I have top-of-the-line guests on this show, Ken Davis, CLU, CHFC, CFP, and CPA, and part of our study group and consulting here at Brokers Alliance. Hey, Steven. Ken, we're talking about... Uh, you know, the tax-free, but I just want to talk about tax-free and all the implications that it has. We saw in show two of this week, when I was listening to you and Eric, how the government kind of, this is kind of insidious. I hate to say this. I love my country, but I mean, this is kind of a backdoor way. When you said that that person, you were doing the 1040, if you missed Tuesday's show, you need to go out. And actually, I have to say, if you want to watch this week and really get a lot out of it, go back to Monday's, watch it in sequence. But in Tuesday's show, Ken did one small 1040 exercise. And I could not believe, because of one little item, it doubled up their taxable event. Now see, that to me, that's, you know, full disclosure, yeah, well, when the government does it, I'll do mine, okay? But I'm doing mine as a proactive example to the United States government. And I wanna add one step further. When we think about the taxation issues, yes, if I have a non-MEC contract kept in force for the life of the insurer, I take out strategic withdrawals of basis and policy loans to gain in the correct years that I can manage that and do it. And I do a really good job at it. And I'm suppressing all the cost of insurance issues by buying the lowest possible non-MEC death benefit, whether it's increasing or level. And I don't care right now, just for our concept. I have a lot on the plate here that is taxable, ta really tax favored, I should say. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is Boy, if you had have told me this 30 years ago when I first started in this business, I mean, when I came here, the maturity date was 95. Ken, mm -hmm. smoker, non-smoker, right? Right, that was it. Oh, my gosh. How hard Term was that? insurance, whole life insurance. That was it. And, and you didn't even draw blood and urine until half a million. <laughs> I mean, think about yeah. that. Now, when we talk about it, we're talking about so many different chassis. We're splitting the Chem 24 urine and blood exam. Talk about micromanaging our chemistry now. We're splitting it to super preferred. <laughs> I love this. I feel like wearing a cape. Super preferred and preferred plus preferred standard plus standard before we even get into substandard underwriting. We don't even use table A anymore. I mean, it's ridiculous. So when I think about this, we're managing it. Now, the problem is, is that years ago, if you had a client do the dumb thing, and I had one uh, person, wasn't my client, but an attorney said, I have a gentleman here that's 94 that's been taking constructive receipt of policy loans for the last 20 something years. And he's getting towards 95, and I wanna be able to 1035 it. I'm thinking, whoa, who's gonna take an issue at 95? Think about that. Back then, that was fantasy. Today, we have a carrier that actually does second to die issues at age 94. I mean, unbelievable. But think about this, the client not only could I had to tell the attorney he can't 1035 it if the client lives another six months or whenever it was back then I can't remember if he lives to the maturity date of the contract all the policy loans he took are going to be a taxable event right. and and because the client didn't pay the interest charge and this was just happened to be on a direct recognition loan the most expensive of all that client had another three to four hundred thousand even though he had that he has to pay taxes on on what's called phantom income. Now, right. that bothered me, Ken. Sure. I have to say. Talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get into the, the, the list here. Well, I, you know, like all things, as we structure these things, we have to know uh, what's going on. And I think part of what I was reacting to as you're going through all that type of thing is the world has changed. Mm. People are living longer. The contracts allow for the policies to stay in force longer. We always have to be mindful that if we're going to do the loans or the distributions from life insurance, they have to remain in force, and all of that has to be disclosed up front. Mm -hmm. But think about it. The strategy from the old split annuity to the new is all changes. Uh, one is that interest rates are much lower than they used to be. The other is that we have lifetime income benefit riders. Now we're talking about throwing index life products in there with potentially arbitrage creating variable loans and all that stuff. So, and, and, the, and our clients want to spend more, but they don't want to take as much risk. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, the paradigm has changed from shooting for those high returns in the stock market and not worrying so much about the details of expenses and taxes 
And now they were saying, no, I don't want to take that risk. So we're, we're providing index strategies mm -hmm. that reduce risk. We are uh, reducing taxation. We're squeezing out the fees and expenses as much as possible so that we can have a smaller beginning number and end up with still a pretty competitive mm -hmm. after-tax net spendable income or cash at the mm -hmm. end. So we're changing strategies from growth and maximizing return to safer growth and returns mm -hmm. and reducing expenses and taxes along the way. And this has always been my bailiwick. I've made a living as a retail agent and broker along the way, and I don't, I don't mm -hmm. keep a securities license anymore. I just do nothing but annuities and life insurance. And I've transitioned over to less risk, mm -hmm. better tax benefits, more net spendable income on a safe way. And, and the baby boom generation wants that. They, they mm -hmm. want that high income, but they don't want to take a lot of risk and, and they don't want to pay taxes. Well, I don't want to pay any taxes any more than I have to pay. I'm happy to be legit, do my 1040 the way you're supposed to be as a good citizen. But if I have any ounce, I want to take it. And this is the biggest one of all. Well, and, and, and let me, th this is an important concept. On the one hand, people might say, well, gee, you're manipulating the tax law. You're gaming the tax law. Well, you know what? When Congress and the IRS is not truthful f with us, if they're not mm -hmm. really fully disclosing, when they can stand up at a microphone and say that some widow at 65 is only paying a 25% tax bracket and that they're going to nail the rich that are supposedly mm -hmm. 200 to 250,000. I was talking in this example about a lady making 10,000 in interest income, 30,000 in pension, and mm -hmm. 24 in Social Security. This is not a rich person. Yet ultimately we see by doing a before and after calculation that there's a 42% effective tax bracket. Hey, guess what? I'm on a mission. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's gaming the system. I don't think it's inappropriate. I think it's bringing it back to reality to protect that person, a retired person that worked all mm -hmm. her life, who now is getting nailed by the tax law and the sure. government is not being honest with us. They make it impossible to talk about this in a 10, 30 second sound clip on TV and they know that, and that's why they do it this way. They bury it. They come after us for non-disclosure, for not being honest about things and hiding stuff in our mm -hmm. industry. I'm telling you, the government does it, at least the tax laws, so far at a much higher level than we ever have, and, and I think it's time to combat that. Well, just remember, that's Ken.Davis at BrokersAlliance.com. <laughs> the following bashing of the United States Government Code was done by a non-W-2 employee of Brokers Alliance. Okay, get on your get on your uh, little soapbox there, Ken. But listen, think about it. We were told years back that Social Security would never be taxed. That's right. And it's taxed. Then it taxed at 50. Now it could be all the way up, could be, could be, top bracket at 85, ordinary income tax. And then we're going down my line here. Think about this. We have this gentleman that has a $10,000 capital gain. He puts it down on his, his AGI. Everybody's celebrating that he's making 15% capital gain. That's all he has to pay on it. Right. Not making it, paying it. Right. And then he finds out, oh, my 10000 has to be transferred over to my provisional income test for Social Security. And now that adds to the Social Security. Now my Social Security gets taxed because of a capital gain idea. Right. And it, it is, in fact, a 15% tax on the 10000 But the 10000 flows through from Schedule D, cap gains mm -hmm. to page one, flows down to the adjusted gross income, and then is ultimately included in taxable income. And of course, the AGI affects whether Social Security is taxed, oh, yeah. what our level of Medicare premiums are. Uh, it may phase out deductions, credits, exemptions. There's all these little moving parts that it's impossible for the human brain to get wrapped around. So we can't just say, well, this is going to impact you this way. You actually have to run it through some software. Mm -hmm. You have to see the before and after picture. The effect is dramatic. And when the client pays a lot less taxes, which he's very happy to do that, he gets to save or keep net spendable income, which is our whole game here, where I want to be able to generate more income for my clients and our strategies and tactics using combination annuities as well as some of this thing we're talking about today, adding life onto the plate, can really, really mitigate some of these issues. And once we understand how the 1040 works, and again, AXA has a wonderful transparency on this. If you want to order it, just say, Steve, I want it. Write me at the biz at brokersalliance.com or call us 1-800-290-7226 extension 147 and we'll send you the accident transparency. It's right in an attachment. You just go down to your favorite Kinko's or whatever. There's another one, cha-ching. And you go ahead and get a transparency made and it will walk you through some of the items that we're talking about. Why do we, or why are we so passionate about this? Because 
Retirement in your golden years should be a cash flow event. And right. I don't want to be sitting there micromanaging my expenses and budget because I have a poor income generation issue. And I want an idea. Part of my, I'm not saying everything should be in everything we're talking about, Ken. We're right. not saying that. Right. But we should have a portion of this that should be take it to the bank mentality. Right. This should be something where you can say, I know this part is guaranteed. I might still be playing in the market. I have mutual funds. Nothing wrong with that. LPs, real estate, all those things I'm there on. But I really want to be able to say one part of this is going to actually be there no matter what. I like the guarantees on some of this. That's why I like tax advantaged products or tax favored or tax treatment that actually lets me keep more of my hard earned money. I put it away for my golden years. I'd like to spend it in my golden years. Well, and, and it, this all reminds me of Judge Learned Hand who was a Supreme Court Justice who said it is our obligation as taxpayers to manage our taxes to our, our, our benefit. Mm -hmm. And boy, I sure long for the days of the government officials that take the attitude that the taxpayer has the right to manage their affairs in a way that uses the, the laws you know, reasonably, but actually benefits them. And that's what we're doing here. And I, I'm just hoping that as time goes by, they don't take more and more of this away so that there just isn't any planning left. But for now, there still is, and these are some of our opportunities. The, p the people that sell capital assets have capital gain treatment. The, the people that do annuities and life insurance have tax deferral. And what we've been talking about today is using tax deferral in those two forms, the, the annuitization process and the deferral process yep. to maximize our benefits for our clients. Well, that's all the time we have today. What a week. If you want to see this show, go back and watch all of our shows in HD 1080p. You can hop right out to our site, www.brokersalliance.com. When you come to the homepage, you'll see a big red button. It says On Demand Video. Go ahead and click it. Watch all our shows that Ken and I have been talking about all this week with Eric Palmer. You can watch them on YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I'm Steve Savant. You've been listening to the Business Insurance Zone. That's the buzz on the biz. <laughs> Get into the zone, the Business Insurance Zone. This has been a Bravo video event of the National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance, one of the largest distributors of insurance products and services to a nationwide network of insurance professionals. Need insurance guidance? Call Brokers Alliance. The Business Insurance Zone, dedicated to financial professionals who use insurance in their practice.